take over side so that, that the receptors cannot get in. Uh, we have, uh, so that we have uh, the action either halted or slowed down. Indirect acting, we know what indirect means. It functions, break down the cholinesterate enzyme. ACH means what? Acetylcholine. Exactly. And now we're acting, allows them to activate your, the whole issue with the fluid and, and tell the muscle. Correct? In effect, as you can see there. We have reverse, reversible. Irreversible is what does happen and those things take place that is, is what the action you get. For the other one is that we can kick these things out of the receptor sites. They, they, it's kind of like, um, what is that um, sit-in thing now? What is that? Occupy. Occupy Wall Street. Well, they were there for a while. And now they're gone. They were reversible. Does that help you to paint a picture? Example that you have here, and then, uh, and we'll be looking at some of these other medications that we go along with the other symptoms as well. Anticholinergics inhibit the act of ACH, so we actually see them coming in and then block, be blocking the receptors so that now they won't have a place to go, so therefore the action slows down. Does that make sense? And the effect. P is pulse, by the way. My secretary got lazy. No. <laughs> but I gotta blame somebody. I'm not gonna blame my secretary. <laughs> I could, I could blame my evil twin, but I'm not sure she would like that. I do have a twin sister. Yeah. She just has more hair. <laughs> As you see in medication here, we have atropine, which increases the pulse, decreases motility and peristalsis. That, oh, you can see that medication is used in uh, anti-diarrheals. We have diarrhea. Okay, we want to slow down peristalsis. We may increase the pulse rate a little bit, but we're going to decrease the gut. And then that allows the, uh, that organ system to actually relax. The side effects and adverse reactions that you see there. We're affecting the smooth muscle. So if, if we decrease the motility and peristalsis, what are we doing with the muscle? Are we relaxing it or are we constricting it? Relaxing, relaxing. relaxing it. So contraindication in glaucoma, you have smooth muscle which allows fluid to come in and out of the eye. What, is it? what happens now, you, you dilate the blood vessel and more fluid comes in and actually causes glaucoma to become worse. That's part of the contraindication. Nursing interventions, again, if you understand the, the uh, workings of the medication, you understand the side effects we've been looking at, then these are the things that you would normally look for. Some medication, anti Parkinsonism. You know, the famous person with Parkinson's now is Michael J. Fox. Who is the famous one before him? Muhammad. Muhammad. 
I knew him before he changed his name. <laughs> He's going, I didn't know you had another name. No. <laughs> Side effect, if you go back to the uh, anticholinergics, you'll see what the side effects are. Uses for Parkinson's disease and pseudo-Parkinsonism, uh, a condition that has the same symptoms as Parkinson's, but it is not, is not caused by the same issues. We have antihistamines, Dramamine, trans transdermine, Propolamine. My first, uh, food, my first food. My wife got one of those. Put it behind the ear. Great. Uh, Dramamine is really good, but it puts you to sleep for a couple hours after you take it. And the side effects we have here again. And the side effects were caused all by the nerve, the nerve action, not the organ action. That was my old, my old uh, commander. <laughs> he was a weevil. A weevil wobble, but they don't fall down. <laughs> hey. Gotcha. <laughs> and then we go on into the central nervous system. In the categories as we see here. See the movie The Rat Race? <laughs> Mr. Bean? Mm -hmm. Goes at a dead run, gets on into the hallway, <clears throat> sounds sweet. <laughs> Amphetamine! Stimulants! Back in the 50s and the 40s, these things were called Mother's Little Helpers. <laughs> I'm having a bad day, I have to clean the house and do all this, go you know, watch something. I don't have the energy anymore. The doctor would say, well, let's give you some little helpers. <laughs> okay, and off they would run and do their own stuff. Yeah, uh, only problem is, is that they are habit for him. Uh, Dexedrine, where do you find that? Diet, Diet pills, thank you very much. Use and actions that you can see. Side effects, think of everything that has to deal with uh, hyperactivity, and then you have the issues. Just about 100% or, or pretty close 100% of these medications will cause dry mouth. Decreases the the the, uh, the saliva. Anything that affects the central nervous system or, or the parasympathetic nerve, 
you know, the parasympathetic nervous system uh, causes that and causes dry mouth. And that is a common side effect. ADHD. Amphetamines, what kind of medication? Stimulant. Oh, okay. Oh, why are we giving this somebody with ADHD? The opposite. Ah, thank you very much. A, a, a paradoxical effect on them. What happens is you give them a stimulant and it slows everything down. Why? Because it's magic. We have no other reason for that. Magic. And then we have things for narcolepsy which tend to keep you from falling asleep. And it does happen like that, by the way. You'd be sitting here in class, sound asleep. Ten minutes, be wide awake again. And not realize you fell asleep. Okay, that Adderall function exact same way, right? Correct. Okay. Is it used more than Ritalin now? Now it is. Okay. Ritalin was, was a drug of choice, and, and now it, it's fallen. It's yep. still used, but not as much as Adderall. We are causing uh, stimulation of the uh, central nervous system. And by golly, caffeine might increase your effects, you think? <laughs> uh, give them a Coca Cola when they take it. I've got a, a friend who's 26, he's always going 100, you know, just always busy. How do you maintain your lifestyle? Red Bull. <laughs> Keep you awake. Back when I was younger, it, so the uh, drug of choice was Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. And the side effects of Red Lunch, you can see. One thing you'll notice on here is a lot of the side effects are either the reverse of what you're trying to get or they are an intensification of what you're trying to get. For example, the Ritalin would actually tend to, in so much ADHD, help, helps to slow things down. One of the side effects is it makes you go faster. Or it's, it can slow you down to a depressed state. That's where you get that, that zombie-like uh, activity of, of someone who's on Ritalin and they're just kind of not quite as bad as the Thorazine shuffle ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's still classic. <clears throat> Nursing events, as you can see here. One of the important ones is do not stop abruptly for the fact that the body is going 100 miles an mile hour on this, now you stop it and the body hasn't recovered yet. And it can do some strange things on it. Anorexia. Stop through appetite. We talked about dexedrine, and this is a stimulant, correct? One of the uh, uh, things on that was it stimulates the body, uh, increased your furnace, so to speak, so that you burn off more calories. Uh, the side effect is, is that you get tachycardia. If you have any heart disease, then you are done with. Uh, with ephedrine, it was noted that uh, high school and college students who are taking that and then died on the field or in practice, because they had undiagnosed cardiac problems. And then they went off into cardiac arrhythmia. Pardon? Did that happen twice last year? It did. Yeah, exactly. Twice. And then they kicked it off the market, so you can't use it anymore, so they changed the name. It's still out there, really. Is. It is. That's why you got to read labels. Analeptics? Caffeine stimulant. Caffeine, shock, cold medicine. 
one of the use to stimulate respirations and newborns, the side effects, as you can see. If it's a stimulant, think of all the things that happen to you when you're when you're really stimulated, and there you go, you get the same issues. Respiratory stimulants, Dopram. Again, a whole slide dedicated to that drug. <laughs> now we go on to depressant. Stages of sleep, you know that. REM sleep, non REM sleep, uh, no sleep. Like when I'm almost on the verge of sleep, I'm getting ready to just go off into Never Never Land, and my wife says, Can we talk? <laughs> That's me. We have disorders. Insomnia, more common in female clients. I won't even attempt to go into the reason that may be. Um, well, there's a whole bunch of reasons. We'll just let that one die today. Uh, non pharmacologic management, no naps. I found that out when I flew, flew from the U.S. to uh -huh. Germany and I had jet lag. I didn't realize it took me a week and a half to get over jet lag because I was sleeping for two hours in the afternoon. Warm foods to drink, no caffeine, avoid heavy meals, etc., etc. One of the greatest... <laughs> Non-pharmacological agent for relaxation is what? Sex. For men. You didn't know somebody my age knew about this, don't you? It depends on the time of the day. How does he know? Like the energy flow. <laughs> <laughs> we get it clean and have good breath. Okay, this is in the morning, yeah. <laughs> No, we want to cross a mild sleep, enough to press them so the person gets sleepy and wants to fall asleep. One of them that, that's a use, a set of tools and so forth, you can see up there, barbiturates, etc., etc. One of the amphetamines were really popular. We had mom's little helper, and mom was running around 100 miles an hour before she'd go to bed to take a barbiturate. So, uh, you have uh, several people, movie stars and so forth, who were taking those habitually, along with uh, uh, Jim Beam and whatever else, and it came to their demise. Jim Beam. Thank you. They can normally do that. Oh, the over-the-counter now, where they have um, Z-Quil. Night quill for sleep. <laughs> they, yeah, but they just took out the... Uh, you can definitely General side effects, the biggest is residual drowsiness or hangover, drug dependence, tolerance. Uh, the more uh, severe ones, the excessive depression or respiratory depression. Withdrawal symptoms from almost any medication will occur if you're taking it for a long period of time. And it takes anywhere from three to uh, seven days for it to get out of your system. It takes anywhere from 20 to 40 years to get rid of it psychologically. Ooh. Barbiturates are very short acting used in general anesthetic, or used to be. Phenethol, sodium phenethol was the drug of choice. Worked very well. It was sleep, sleep, no residual drowsiness, but one of the major side effects it had was nausea and vomiting. Because it, it, it threw off the nervous system enough and you have problems. Intermediate action is which as you as you can see up here. We have amatol, again, which was used for general anesthetic. And then long acting control seizures. Being a barbital. Mm. 
you have second all, which is not used as much as it used to. Short acting to treat insomnia. They have other medications that they use now that they don't have a uh, similar effect. Don't take both alcohol, poison. Nursing intervention, we are primarily teaching and then safety and the biggest issues with this with these medications. Questions so far? Yes. Yes. You get depressed. It's not uncommon for someone to be on barbiturates and go into crying things. Uh, that, that are chemically induced because of the medication. Uh, Restoril. As uh, 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 we see up here, medication that, that uh, the mamzapam uh, interact with neurotransmitter GABA to reduce neuron excitability. Reduces anxiety. Also helps to treat uh, as a hypnotic for sleeplessness. Dude, you've seen these things, Ambien, with you know, that stuff. Where the butterfly comes in and lands on your nose. Like uh, Stephen Wright, he did say, he said, I hate it during the day when my foot falls asleep. And I know it'll be up all night long and I have no idea what trip I'm going to be Yes, sir. Yes. 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 We have drug interaction with alcohol, because alcohol is a CNS depressant, right? It makes you sleepy and that goofy. Well, if you add two of them together, you get really sleepy and goofy. Nursing intervention, as you can see, these medications are generally used as a last resort. You try natural and non pharmacological methods first before you want to go to these medications. So they tell you to use alcohol? Mm -hmm. They tell you to use alcohol? Um, most of those medicines, we're talking like Lunesta oh, okay. and those medications, if you ever got one from your, your physician, they usually give you uh, three to four to five days worth and stop. And then you got to go back and you have to re-ask for more medication based on your insomnia. Uh, because of, on long-term use, they are very habitable. Uh, you yeah. become dependent. You know, aren't addicted to it. You become dependent upon it. Well, you can't sleep unless you have it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as, as you get older, one of the greatest uh, medications to help people sleep is Tylenol. Nice pilot. You, you speak a, a good textbook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tylenol, and you'll be out like a light. <laughs> <laughs> Anesthetic will cover briefly, it will so be covered again later on, um, but just very briefly, is where we are trying to induce uh, a reduction of pain, relaxation, loss of consciousness, and amnesia. Medication is there so that a person can do strange things to your body if you don't remember. And the routes are as indicated there, depending on what is going to happen or what uh, treatment is, is intended. <coughs> uh, just a big picture, spinal anesthesia. Uh, the important thing about, about the, uh, spinal anesthesia is that the person is recovering from this, they have to lay flat and not be bounced around for a period of 24 hours or they get a headache from hell. Is that the really epidural? Have, you think of a migraine headache? Mm -hmm. Multiply times two, we have here. 
important to this. Very important to remember. They balance anesthesia. They, they, they will use a combination of drugs to work what they have. One of the drugs of, of uh, course is they use like morphine and Versed. Not the spine. They use that more for what's called conscious, conscious sedation. Yeah. That it'll, it'll put you to a point where you don't remember anything. Uh, but the nice thing is, is the Versed, which, which all, all has a effect on your central nervous system to make you relax and to kind of make you make you're semi-conscious. It also is used for uh, nausea and vomiting. And then we have some of our other friends here, uh, atropine and so forth. Uh, your side of it's an adverse reaction that you would imagine if you're trying to put somebody asleep, uh, you are having issues with respiratory hypotension and so forth. Panic dysfunction tells you what? Maybe the process through the liver on its way out, exactly. Those are for general? Those yes. Are the, general? Uh, the only one that has the least effect is, is inhaled. But, but generally with that, they use a combination of medications, not just the one. Nursing interventions, again, if you understand what's happening to the body, you know that uh, what you need to do in order to keep them safe. Anti-convulsions, we all know what happens with convulsions. Basically, those synapses are firing at 100 million times a second. And then, uh, because the body can't handle it, no longer do you have a, um, a focused action that becomes sporadic. And you go on to our tonic, chronic responses and so forth. Grand mal's the most common generalized alternating muscle spasms and jerkiness. Any mal can be a number of things. It can be everything from just staring at a wall to uh, a slight action which is going on. You may not even know it's, it's happening. Except all of a sudden you've lost that person's attention. And you're sitting there going, hello, hello, and all of a sudden they come back. Or they just had a seizure. Or you were really, really bored. Generally, not all the time, but generally, because we're, we are because of the action of the, the nerve action within the synapses, we are affecting all the cranial nerves. So yeah, you, you will have that. Which you get. Not all. You know, sometimes it may just be very slight, though, you know, rather than the uh, Partial seizures, as you can see here, maybe nothing more than repetitive chewing or swallowing. Behavior changes, motor seizures. The action of the medication is to suppress abnormal neural finding, uh, firing and get everything back in the sink again so you don't have that uh, issue. And different medications that we have for those, uh, for that problem. Hydatolin, again, this is all under your anti-seizure, is uh, medication. You see there, they're doing the exact same thing. They're pulling down the abnormal firing, and then the side effects, as you see there. This medication, unlike other ones, has a uh, interesting side effect where it actually causes gingivitis and gingival hyperplasia. So oral care with this medication is very, very important. Questions? What's the nystagmus? What is nystagmus? Involuntary eye movement.